DOE CSGF Fellow Amaresh Sahu in the field of chemical engineering at the University of California, Berkeley. All right. Um, hi, my name is Amrush. I am a fourth year, uh, incoming fifth year chemical engineering graduate student at UC Berkeley. And today I'll be talking about my research in using non-equilibrium thermodynamics and hydrodynamics to understand lipid membrane. Um, but before we get started, I just want to thank um, everyone at the CSGF for um, working really hard at the last minute to kind of put this a virtual program review together and giving me a chance to share my research. Um, so with that, I'm just going to start by briefly reviewing what a lipid membrane is. So what you see here is a schematic of a phospholipid molecule. And um, it has two parts. There's a, a head group, which is polar, meaning it likes being in contact with water, and two fatty acid tails, which are nonpolar. So they really dislike being in water. So if I were to, for example, sprinkle a bunch of these molecules into a solution, um, one of the structures that can form is called a bilayer. Essentially, I have these lipids um, sort of sandwiched together, and I have water on the top and water on the bottom. And essentially, this allows the polar groups to be in contact with water and the fatty acid tails to be tucked away. This is a very energetically favorable structure. And it turns out that these kinds of bilayers um, are ubiquitous in the cell. So for example, they make up the cell membrane, they make up the membrane of the nucleus, and um, we're generally interested in understanding how they behave and how they do what they do. And so from the zoomed out perspective that I'm gonna be taking, uh, you can think of lipid membranes as a material, and I am interested, and, and sort of the most important uh, material property of lipid membrane that they behave like fluids in plane. The lipids can flow past one another like a fluid, but they bend elastically. So I could take this membrane and I can bend it and it'll bend like an elastic shell. And in my opinion, nothing um, captures this behavior better than the following video from Stephen Block's group at Stanford. So what you're looking at here is a neuron and that circle is an optical tweezer. And what they're going to do is they're going to take this tweezer and pluck up a piece of membrane, and it forms a tube, which is already a non-trivial membrane shape. But then as they move this tweezer around, you'll see that the tube is moving along with it. And the only way this is possible is that lipids are flowing and dynamically readjusting in plane um, to accommodate these large out-of-plane elastic deformations. Um, and so it turns out that uh, lipid membranes can also exhibit um, further complex behavior. So uh, imagine that I have like a, a system with multiple different kinds of lipids. So in this video that I'm going to show you right here, um, there are several different kinds of lipids and they're in this large spherical structure. It turns out that under certain circumstances, this, uh, the lipids can phase separate. So I get two different phases that are in coexistence. Um, here's another video showing the same thing where uh, you can see that one of these phases is clumping together and forming larger domains um, because it's energetically favorable to do so. Um, and it turns out that there are also systems in which this phase separation can be connected to the bending processes that we talked about. So in this you know, beautiful sequence of experimental images, you'll notice um, that the two phases are the two different colors. And you'll notice that one of the phases tends to be more dense than the other. And furthermore, we form all of these kinds of complicated shapes. So you could ask the question, how do such shapes form? And can we understand their physics? Um, finally, another you know, very relevant um, physical process for lipid membranes is that of um, chemical reactions with species in the surrounding fluid. So in this sequence of experimental images, um, these proteins have bound to the membrane surface. This is the top view right here um, to form these cage-like structures. And these structures actually induce the membrane to bend. And so in this side view, you can see that these buds are starting to form. And eventually they'll pinch off. And it's one of the ways that the membrane can transport things inside and outside the cell. Um, so we've seen in this slide and the previous slide, there's an intricate coupling between various processes. 
namely the in-plane flow of lipids, the out-of-plane bending of the entire membrane, um, the phase separation that occurs, and chemical reactions with species in the surrounding fluid. So one of the questions that we can ask is, how do we model um, such a system? So we saw that you know, these, these phenomena occur over hundreds of microns, or hundreds of nanometers, rather, all the way up to tens of microns, and they occur over several seconds. Um, so we can't use molecular dynamics methods to model them, but what we're going to do instead is use uh, a continuum perspective and balanced laws. And um, additionally, we saw that the membrane can form all these kinds of different shapes and morphologies. And so we can't use a simple coordinate system like a Cartesian coordinate system or spherical or cylindrical coordinates. Instead, we use um, the tools of differential geometry that essentially allow us to use coordinate system for any arbitrarily curved surface. And finally, um, we notice that there's this complex coupling between um, the membrane bending and all these other irreversible processes. And so in order to develop you know, a thermodynam thermodynamically consistent set of the equations of motion, we're going to use this framework called irreversible thermodynamics, non-equilibrium thermodynamics, which allows us to consider out of equilibrium systems. Um, and by taking these three uh, ideas together, we can come up with the full um, equations governing lipid membrane in all of the cases that I talked about in the previous two slides. Um, and if you're interested, this was published a couple of years ago. And I don't have time to talk about everything, but I just want to highlight um, the equation that governs the membrane shape. And so if we were to look at it, we'll look at it piece by piece. So the first piece um, is the Young-Laplace equation, which is the equation that governs soap bubble. So in a soap bubble, there's a pressure drop P between the inside and outside of the soap bubble. Um, that, that force is balanced by the surface tension, which is uh, lambda, multiplied by the curvature of your bubble. Now, this isn't that surprising because a membrane can be thought of as a soap bubble with a bending cost. And so, of course, we shouldn't be surprised to see bending forces that arise um, in, in the equation for the membrane shape. Um, the, the form of this is not too important. It's just important to recognize that there are bending forces. But what perhaps is a bit surprising um, is the presence of these, what I call viscous curvature coupling forces. And um, essentially, when lipids are flowing past one another in the plane of the membrane, and the membrane is curved, then that leads to this force in the out-of-plane direction, even though the membrane is bending reversibly. And in order to understand this force, I find it useful to actually consider this first surface tension force. The reason being, um, if we were to consider the, what the surface tension does, if I have a flat patch of membrane, the surface tension is just pulling evenly on all sides. And it's always, the force is always in the plane of the membrane. But as the membrane curves, it turns out that now um, in plane is different at different locations. And so these little, these little differences can sum up to give that, that out of plane tension force. So this is already an example of how an in plane uh, an in-plane stress giving rise to an out-of-plane force. Well, it turns out that um, this is, you know, not a new idea. And so if you compare the tension forces uh, to the well-known, you know, magnitude of the bending forces, this leads to a dimensionless number called the von karman number, or again, lambda is the surface tension, Kb is a bending modulus. Um, you can think of it like a spring constant, sort of. Um, and L is a characteristic length in your system. Now, um, it turns out that we can do the exact same procedure for lipid membranes, where um, when lipids are flowing past one another in plane, it leads to these in plane, you know, shearing forces. But because the membrane is curved, now um, by the exact same mechanism, there's a little bit of, you know, th these forces add up in the out of plane direction. And uh, that actually leads to this new dimensionless number that we found um, called the Scriven-Love number, which compares essentially the magnitude of these viscous curvature coupling forces to the well-known bending forces. And it has the following form where zeta is the membrane viscosity, 
Z is a characteristic um, velocity, and KB and L were introduced previously. Now, a natural question that arises is, do these forces matter? Should we care about them in biological systems? And to answer that question, um, we considered previous experimental results and calculated the magnitude of these dimensionless numbers in, in various experiments. And so I'll tell you how to read this graph. Essentially, each symbol, so here the square, corresponds to a single experiment. And the black square is the scriven love number, and the blue square is the Favre von Karman number. So when the symbols are to the right of zero, it means those forces are significant, and to the left of zero, it means those forces are not significant. So, um, and again, each symbol is a different experiment. So here I have one experiment, and now I'm about to show you two more. So for planar systems, all the experiments we considered, these viscous forces were negligible. But the story is very different when I considered spherical geometry. In particular, here we see several experiments where both the tension forces and the viscous forces are much bigger than the bending forces. So the, me the membrane is behaving more like a fluid film than an elastic shell. And that's very different from how people generally think of membranes and how people have modeled them in the past. Uh, the story is, simple for uh, is similar for cylindrical systems, where again, we see biologically relevant situations where both of these dimensionless numbers are, are greater than one. Um, and uh, to, to sort of investigate this further, um, we, we wanted to look at cylinders specifically. And so one thing that I can do is look at the behavior of a cylinder in the limit of zero bending modulus, which is equivalent to setting this Foppel von Karman number to infinity. Uh, and you can think of this as the limit of a soap bubble. And what we find here is that if I take an initial cylinder and I apply just a very, very small perturbation, then that perturbation is going to reinforce itself. The cylinder is unstable. And it's going to undergo what's known as a purling instability. And so I'll play this um, one more time just to, just to show it once again. And so this is actually the reason why you never see cylindrical soap bubbles, right? They always want to form spheres. And, and if you have a cylinder, it'll try to pinch off in the center to form two spheres. Moreover, we can understand the physical mechanism by which this instability proceeds, which is that I initially put in a shape perturbation. And because um, the tension and the curvature are sort of connected, the tension had to change to accommodate for that shape perturbation I put in. But when I have variations in tension, um, that affects the in-plane flow of lipid. So just as fluid or air flows from high pressure to low pressure, lipids flow from low tension to high tension, if the higher tension is pulling on it more. And this is, this is how this instability propagates. Um, I can also do the same analysis when there is a bending module. So now I'm talking about um, a lipid membrane rather than a soap bubble. Uh, so in this case, the bending forces and the tension forces are kind of competing against one another. But it turns out that we can, we can investigate the, the dynamics of this pulling instability even from the membrane. And so in this particular example, um, the, the instability, you'll, the first thing you'll notice is that it's much slower to propagate. And the reason is because the bending force is competing with the tension, and so it's kind of making it harder for that tension to, to pull on these lipids and, and have instability grow. And you'll also notice that the membrane doesn't pinch as much as the fluid film. The reason being um, that as the radius gets smaller, the bending forces become larger, and eventually the, the shape arrests. And so this tells us um, you know, something interesting about how membranes can be unstable. And it turns out that if I were to increase the bending modulus further, essentially decreasing the Foppel von Karman number. So you see that it's unstable at infinity, it's unstable at two. Eventually there's a threshold at which the tube is just stable. So I can perturb it and it won't undergo a deformation. And we believe that there are biologically relevant situations in which um, this, this sort of transition from stable to unstable is important. But that's currently under investigation. I just want to wrap up my, my presentation by um, thanking my collaborators, and uh, summarizing what we talked about, we talked about you know, the equation governing a membrane shape, 
and um, how this leads to this new dimensionless number called the Scriven Love number. If you're interested, you can um, visit my webpage for all of my references. And um, I'd like to send a big thank you to CSGF um, for supporting me for the last four years. I, uh, I found the um, academic allowance particularly helpful in that it allowed me to go to various conferences that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to go to and sort of communicate with lots of people in the field and, and kind of get my, you know, being able to, to interact with them. So I found that very helpful. Um, with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your time and I'm happy to take any questions.